Sorcerers are tired. Tired of being the butt of every joke on Reddit and tired of having to try so hard just to hit a fraction of the druid's numbers and without all the tankiness, I might add. So before I hang up my sorcerer robe until the class overhaul in season two, I'm bringing you one more build. This time our hydras and other conjurations can dish out the damage themselves. And before you say it, yes, the burn damage may be slightly bugged and is scaling with enemy level, but it's about time we get to enjoy some of those damage bugs that I've been hearing about. In addition to the crazy burning damage from our hydras, our lightning spear actually hits really hard. This conjuration build performs really well in high tier nightmare dungeons, solo or in a group, and a very similar build has even completed tier 100. Not me, because I'm too wild for that and will eventually die. I'll have the skill tree aspects and paragon board linked down below and in the written guide, as well as a link to D4 builds so you can see what to farm for and have that open when you're trying to get all the god rolls. I think this build will also be a great leveling build during the season. It's really nice to just kind of sit back and let your pets do the damage. It's kind of like a little minion pet build since we've got all our conjurations and I love the Hydras. They're such a cool skill. When Blizzard nerfed them to the ground after the beta, everybody was kind of like, eh, I don't want to use them anymore, but they actually didn't get as nerfed as you think they did, and then that paired with the burning damage that we're going to take advantage of the Paragon board for to boost our crit damage and boost our intelligence. We're sitting at almost 1300 intelligence with this build and almost 200 crit damage without using a potion, which is pretty min-maxed. All of that combined makes this build feel really nice to use. It's really fun to use. It's very much so a playstyle that I enjoy. I really like summoner type builds. And so this plays into that fantasy a lot. It's a really great uh, controller build as well because I play on controller. I'm sure you guys can see that in the footage. Sometimes the targeting is not the best. I will say some of the cons to this build are the suppressor enemies, at least on controller. I feel like on mouse and keyboard you probably could get your hydras into the suppressor bubble a lot easier, but you have to constantly recast them to get them into the suppressor bubble, but I feel like everybody kind of has difficulties with the suppressor enemies in that way anyways, so as long as you have your cooldowns and you can teleport in, freeze them, immobilize them, get your hydras out inside the bubble it will melt them pretty quickly it's just the ones that you might not catch right away and then they become unstoppable if you run sorcerer you know all about when enemies get unstoppable because you are applying so many cc's to them if you stun and mobilize and freeze and you're chilling you are going to make enemies unstoppable very very quickly so it's nice to have that raiment of the infinite unique chest piece so that you can pull them all in to stun them so that you can kind of burn everything down at once i will say this build performs really well against bosses because you have so much stun potential that you are building up that stun bar you're stunning the boss and then you're doing massive amounts of damage that's pretty much the whole sorcerer mo no matter what build you're running that's why a lot of times i recommend the aspect where you do more damage to unstoppable enemies because it helps kind of even it out i will tell you something that this build super excels at and that is mana cost and mana regen saving whatever it is you barely use mana in this build because lightning spear and blade are on a cooldown and the only thing that we're spending mana on is our hydras and they don't cost very much at all and they're super quick to just put out and leave them out unless like i said you are spamming them but it is really efficient with mana so we can run a two-hander which is going to give us a staff is going to give us a lot of crit damage which is then in turn going to give us more burning damage because we're using that burning instinct a legendary node that we're going to talk about in the paragon section speaking of let's just jump into it because i am rambling and i want to tell you more about this build the first thing we're going to talk about is gear i'm going to try to go through this as quickly but as thoroughly 
as I can for the helmet. You want to put this armor aspect on it. It's really, really good, especially right now because the armor is a lot better than resistance. It's going to give you that damage reduction. You can also do the damaging of the elite gives you a barrier. That one's also pretty good as well. And then for perks on your helmet, you want to look for plus points into Hydra, Intellect, all stats, crowd control durations, great. Cooldown reduction is always great. Onto the chest, Raiment of the Infinite. We all know about that unique by now. Hopefully, if you don't, it's just a really good unique. <laughs> Onto the gloves, we've got dealing damage to vulnerable enemies while you have a barrier as the aspect. And then you want to get crit chance and intellect are your two number one perks that you want to get on there and then lucky hit chance and attack speed are really great too this is like my god roll gloves that i've had forever onto your pants you want to get as much damage reduction as you can damage reduction from distant enemies is really great because a lot of distant ranged ghosts and uh bow corpse bow dudes and everything that's what's going to get you so do damage reduction from distance, damage reduction from close, etc. The aspect you want in here is Frost Nova gains an additional charge. This one's kind of a little bit broken maybe where it's giving you like crazy amounts of cooldown depending on how many enemies you freeze. So, you know, try to freeze a lot, I guess. You also want intellect on your pants. Then down to our boots, we want the flame shield lets you move unhindered and it makes them immobilize. This is going to contribute to our damage that I'll show you in a second on our weapon. We've got plus four ranks of Frost Nova in here. This contributes to our cooldown, which is extremely good, and you want Intellect on here. Then down to our staff, we've got you deal 70% more damage to a mobilized, stunned, or frozen. This is such a good aspect. It is pretty much a non-negotiable on any Sork build that you're going to see out there. You want to make sure you're doing all three of these things to the enemy to get maximum potential out of this. It is just an amazing mod. And then for the aspects on your weapon, you want to look at the item power, make sure you get as high item power as you can. And then you're also going to want to look for critical strike damage. This is increasing our burning damage with our legendary node and our paragon uh, board, as well as the intellect is also increasing that. So you want to get crit damage and intellect and then vulnerable damage if you can get it. Unfortunately, I don't have that. So we just have crowd controlled and chilled. Over to our amulet, I was playing around with this aspect, not sure if I really like it so far, but it's kind of crazy that you can get it up to 90% <laughs> on an amulet. However, I think you want to run edge masters on here, which is the aspect that says the more resource you have, the more damage you do up to your full resource. It's like 20%. We want that one because we're almost always at max resource, so we would be getting the max benefit out of that. And then on your amulet, you want to look for Devouring Blaze because that increases our crit damage, which also therefore in turn increases our burning damage, and it's going to increase the crit damage of our other conjurations against the enemies that are burning from the Hydra. And then you want intelligence. If you have over around like 900 intelligence, you want to go for a percent intelligence on your amulet. This is going to give you a big, big chunk. It's almost as big as the two-hander, so definitely go for that. You also want to try to get conjuration mastery, I think I will go for, or points into conjuration, something like that. Another passive or points into conjuration on here. I don't have that. So, you know, that's something that we're trying to get. And then on our ring, you want to get crit strike damage, vulnerable damage, 100% crit strike chance is also really good. I would rather have that than cold damage because we're not really doing that much cold damage at all. And then you want an additional Hydra. You want that one on there. These two ring ones are kind of mandatory as far as the aspects go. You want, while enemies are affected by damage, more damage over time than their total life, you deal increased burning damage to them and then the extra hydra those two but on your rings you want crit damage crit chance vulnerable damage max life is really good too for that uh defense and then we've got our two-hander all right that is <laughs> the gear over to the skills i'm going to make this full screen so we can go through it pretty quickly i put one point in each of these just for the enhancement so i can swap them in and out i like to have frostbolt and or firebolt 
on and then down here I have one in a fireball just for the fireball enchant. I've been kind of moving around in chance just to test them. Fireball is really good, especially if you're in a group. And then we've got three points into devastation for the nine mana, which is kind of pathetic to put three points into that, but we have to to get down to our defense, which is where we're going to pick up Flame Shield, Teleport, and Frost Nova. We've got the heal from Flame Shield, the 30% uh, damage reduction from Teleport, and the vulnerable from our Frost Nova. You want to plug as many points as you can into Frost Nova because it's going to lower your cooldown. We've also got three out of three in a glass cannon our chest gives us plus one take these out if you're like pushing really high nightmare dungeons but other than that i just always keep them in we got one point into elemental attunement i thought that this skill was garbage but it's actually really nice because especially if you have high lucky hit chance which we have a pretty decent amount it's going to give you your uh, defensive skill back randomly down to conjuration we've got align the elements and protection this is helping us get a barrier and doing a little bit more damage when we teleport in freeze and then we have a barrier right and then this is our lucky hit chance we've got five and five out of five into hydra we've got our additional head and then burning we've got ice blades with the cooldown we've got lightning spear with the stun and then we've got conjuration mastery which i would like to find an amulet with plus three into this because then we would be doing another three percent per each active conjuration so that's six percent total just damage per conjuration that's pretty nice then on down to more passives in the mastery tree we've got inner flames devouring blades crippling flames this is going to help us keep things immobilized as well and then down here we've got permafrost and hoarfrost we don't pick a ultimate and then down here we've got esus ferocity to get more crit strike damage but you could go with combustion if you want to or shatter is another good option you can also take some points out of here and go into warmth if you want i just feel like it doesn't really heal me for that much and at the level of nightmares that i'm doing i'm either one shot or not like i'm not really going to out heal any damage so that's why i chose not to go for it but that is the skill tree for the paragon board mine is completely all over the place it's not bad but it's not good i really want to get this vulnerable board back down into the mix because i'm missing all this vulnerable damage i'm gonna have a link to d4 build so you guys can see the full paragon tree of what i would want but we're gonna go over real quick the glyphs and board combos so the first starting board we've got conjurer this is going to give us conjuration skill damage and increased duration so that one's really important the next one we've got control this gives us damage to crowd controlled enemies and then you deal increased damage to slowed or chilled enemies or more damage to stunned or frozen enemies we're doing all of those things so this is a really great one to get we've got a lot of dexterity in that node oh and then the most important thing right here burning instinct you want to get this up as high as possible which means you got to jack up your critical strike damage and your intellect so we've got 693 right now on this bad boy watch what happens when i put a potion on you want to run these potions these increases uh, your critical strike chance by six percent and your crit strike damage by 35 percent so we're going to increase our crit strike damage by 35 percent and look at how much this actually increases our burning instinct 819 percent so that's a huge increase just for 35 percent crit damage so it's huge to get points into that points into your intellect you want to jack up your intellect as much as humanly possible with this build and then we've got control in there like i said on to the next also this paragon board we get a lot of rare nodes a lot so you want to try and get a lot of all stats on your gear so that you can increase your willpower and dexterity and unlock those rare nodes as they go up as you're putting them up in the boards but we've got elementalist here on this board this is enchantment master is the board and then we're boosting our non uh, physical damage through there i'm not sure if i like this glyph quite yet but we are doing 15 percent more damage to enemies multiplicatively because we are applying fire cold and lightning all three of those things i did hear a rumor in the beginning that lightning wasn't counting for the shock abilities though so i wonder if that is true or not 
Up next, we got Searing Heat is the board, and we're doing Flame Feeder in here, damage to burning enemies with Flame Touched over here, and we've got a lot of uh, increased fire damage. Also important, super, super important to note, these nodes up here are crit damage. So we've got 30% crit damage between these three nodes. Those are extremely important to pick up. Then in our next board, this is Elemental Summoner. We're actually getting the legendary node here, and this is all going to be Conjuration damage. So as you can see here, we've got Reinforced. This is boosting our Conjuration skill damage. Now, I would love to get this extra bonus one. I did have 530 decks at one point when I was using one-hander, but I don't have a two-hand with all stats on it so that I can get the crit damage and the all stats and intellect, but we'll see if I can get some favorable RNG. Anyways, then we go up to our last board, which is going to be Frigid Fate. Like I said, I want to pull this board down to probably this location right here so that I can get a lot of the vulnerable nodes I want to be able to get all these vulnerable nodes and then also this section right here and then put a glyph socket in here that's going to boost like tactician or reinforced that's my hope for that whole uh, board as well I wouldn't mind getting this lucky hit chance node but it's just really hard to get everything that I want for this paragon tree but that is it for the build I hope you guys enjoy it it's something that I'm really enjoying I love summoner builds so it's something a little bit different for sorcerer that I've been running and having a lot of fun with we'll see how it fares in the season I think I might actually level a character up this way during the season. I'm going to be a little late starting the season because I will be playing Remnant and making content for Remnant on this channel. So I'll be a little bit late to the season, but hopefully there'll be some fun things to do. Over the next week, however, I will be playing some Diablo on stream, playing this build, hanging out, checking out some of the new stuff on the Eternal Realm starting on the 18th. So come check me out at twitch.tv slash abbeyhour. As always, you can find written guides of this build, all my other builds over on our website at dpscheck.gg. So if you want to see builds, we've got them for every single class. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you guys in the next one.